This river is old. Her story is long. This river is wide and open. But this river is broken. She is like the pillars of old piers, the ones that stick out of the water at the shore, lapped over by every wake. You can't always see her, but she is always there. It's a funny little place, this, this place called Winnipeg and the, and the Forks. If you go inside the park a little bit, you come to the circle, which kind of commemorates the idea of the Forks being a meeting place for generations. Um, we actually don't know how long people have been meeting here. It's, it's tens of thousands of years. Um, and actually, many of that knowledge um, has subsequently been lost. But at the top of Odina Circle, there's a beautiful little monument, and it's the memorial for the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls in the top kind of circle-y area. To me, it always reminds me of a seeing stone. And the legend is that when you see through those seeing stones, you can actually connect to the spirit world, and that's what you're seeing. And at the foot of this statue, there's all these little stones. There's tons of little red cloth tobacco bundles that people have left. When the Soto first arrived at the rivers, the mouth of the Red and Assiniboine, they called it Death River. They found wigwam full of corpses, Cree and Assiniboine, peoples decimated by smallpox. They stayed there anyway, went up to Netley Creek, pushed to their territorial limits by encroaching settlers. They had no choice. They bur buried, mourned, and then found every berry they had ever heard of, every type of game, a lake of endless fish. They called it paradise and wanted to stay forever. They prospered there for centuries, were one of the richest bands for miles, but the city moved too close and their lands were so good so early in the last century, the Soto were pushed further north with false promises and illegal votes. They were moved so far from all they had found and all they had to bury. The Selkirk Setra Settler Statue, which you can go and have a look at, has an exact twin um, in Scotland in a tiny place called Helmsdale, um, which is on the eastern coast of Scotland facing the North Sea. There are two of these statues, one in Winnipeg, one in Helmsdale. And Helmsdale is a beautiful green valley that is now totally empty. It would have supported thousands of people, thousands of small-scale crofters, but it was cleared entirely for sheep farming, and you can still see burned out villages there, and you have this statue. But there's a kind of doubleness here, because while, uh, <laughs> while the Selkirk settlers didn't have a choice about being forced out, they did have a choice about what they did when they got here, and the majority of them chose to side with the Canadian state, chose to be part of a genocide, part of settler colonization. The other thing about the Selkirk settler statue that I like to get across is what, is what Kate's already mentioned, which is this this very patriarchal picture of what these settlers are. It, re it literally is a big Scottish man with flowing red hair. It's not painted, but you know it's red, with like a belt billowing shirt and a kilt and this woman who's a little bit shorter behind him. And it gives this particular picture of this honourable Scottish patriarchal family who came here and had to have land here because they deserved it. Um, as if every person who was forced out of their village was this perfect family with a husband and a wife and two kids, as if there weren't all sorts of gay people and mad people and strange people that were part of that wave of settlers as well. Um, and that's part of this myth-making, right, that my home, Scotland, has of um, these people who were forced out of their land. But we now like to make them up as, as these mythical figures who came and forged a new life for themselves in Canada. And we tell these myths to avoid facing up to our own part in 
genocide. And that's, that's the clear truth of what, what is in that statue. It's not just there to commemorate the theft of Scottish land by Scottish aristocrats, a theft which in Scotland is still ongoing. We still have the most unequal land distribution in Europe because the same aristocrats, and we are talking actual royals here, um, the same people still own the same vast tracts of land that they always did. But that's not why that statue's there. We don't talk about that. We might talk about English colonization of Scotland, but we don't talk about that. It's there to deal with our own guilt about taking part in a genocide. So that's what I see when I see that statue. Inclusion one. You take that land you've won, you dig in, you build your bulwark there, and then you start to expand your territory. Two, and if that's not working, you take out a grenade and put it on that land and blow it up. Language. One, words which are outside. Two, synonym for land. Three, precognition. Four, the first technology of the imperial nation state. Five, synonym for land. Map. One, land is video game. Two, to play. Three, listen, can you draw how the land appears from the land? Can you draw what means and what new lines will you need? This river is the reason we're all here. She carried us on her broad brown back without complaint. This river's only payment has been our refuse, refusals, indifference. But this river doesn't need your intention or your inquiry. This river is too busy doing what she has always done, kicking ass and taking care. This river has never been idle. She was here before you, and she will be here after, long after we've all gone. This river is full. This river is family. This river is forever. Because this river, of course, is red. 